Intel just canceled their Optane persistent memory technology, except they didn't. I'm Stephen Foskett, and this is the Gestalt IT Checksum. The tech industry is buzzing that Intel just canceled their Optane persistent memory technology. Except they actually didn't cancel it. Instead, what they did is they released in their quarterly results that they're going to take a half a billion dollar hit and wind down their Optane persistent memory division. Now, I don't want to put too fine a point on it, but the products are not canceled yet. In fact, Intel hasn't communicated with folks like me as of August 2nd what exactly is going to happen with Optane next. And if rumors are to be believed, Intel has built up quite a horde of Optane chips. Plus, Intel finally released their third generation Xeon scalable processors, codenamed Ice Lake, in volume, and they're the ones that can make great use of Optane persistent memory technology. What all this means is that even though Optane is dead, it's kind of not dead. In fact, more to the point, it's kind of awesome. Before we continue, let me back up and talk a little bit about what Optane is. For a long time in history, we've had a division between memory and storage. So you've got CPUs that access caches and main system memory, usually dynamic RAM or static RAM. And then there's a gap in terms of performance, but also in terms of expense until you get to things like flash memory and hard disks and tape and all that world of storage. Optane sought to close that gap, essentially delivering volume like storage and persistence like storage, but performance and being close to the CPU like memory. And the surprising thing is it actually worked really, really well, eventually. Intel co-developed this technology, which was originally called 3D Crosspoint with Micron. And apparently, like many technologies, they had a little bit of teething problems with the uh, first few batches, and Micron bailed. Intel, for its part, released the first Optane products as basically kind of unimpressive SSDs. And I think this may have been their biggest problem. Now, I understand why they did it. They weren't ready to have Optane act as uh, persistent memory, and they had this new technology, and they wanted to get it into the market. So what did they do? They put it behind an SSD controller and made it look like an SSD. The problem was that it was a very expensive SSD, and even though it was fast and, re and durable, it just didn't have a lot of use case for it. So most people, I think, came away kind of unimpressed with Optane right from the start. What Intel really needed was their third generation Xeon scalable processors and chipsets to come to the market because those were the ones that could make use of Optane as memory. Unfortunately, Z Ice Lake Xeons were very late to market and Intel uh, was really struggling in order to bring those things in volume and, and, and drive adoption. When they finally did come out and the Optane persistent memory mode came out, well, guess what? It works really well. In fact, we here at Gestalt IT just finished a white paper sponsored by Intel where we talked about the ideal server configuration in 2022. And spoiler alert, the ideal server configuration is the third generation Xeon scalable with Optane, Ethernet 800, and other Intel accelerators. Now, yeah, the paper was sponsored by Intel, but I'm proud of that paper and I agree with its results. In other words, the Xeon scalable platform, while it's maybe not as uh, impressive on a per core basis or on a number of cores basis as AMD, it's everywhere. It's in the cloud, it's in the data center, it's widely available from every OEM, it's cost effective, and it gives you really great results, especially in content, when it has Optane involved. That was, for me, the most surprising thing from our tests. We actually got terabytes of Optane memory and put them into a third generation Xeon scalable server from HPE, and that thing flew. Of course it did, because we were able to store databases and VDI information and everything in system memory, a directly addressable memory, instead of having to page and go out to storage all the time. Well, that's what Optane's good for, and that's really the sweet spot for this technology. And like I said, it's here. So here we are today, and Intel's canceling Optane. What happened? Well, Pat Gelsinger happened. Here's the thing. Intel has been struggling to get Ice Lake to market. It was very late. They've also been struggling to bring Optane to market, and they've been struggling to bring a lot of things to market, including their next generation process nodes for manufacturing. 
Gelsinger is not somebody who's going to have a lot of patience for a, a company that's not performing up to the level that he needs it to. And I think that he took a look at the uh, technology and uh, where Intel is at and made the hard decision that Opt Optane had to go. Now, that doesn't mean that Optane is dead. In fact, uh, as I said, if you believe the, the rumors, there's a huge hoard of Optane memory still sitting there. And if you believe me, Optane plus third generation uh, Xeon scalable processors works really, really well as a uh, basically expanded memory. What that means is that for the time being, Optane has really hit its stride and it's ready to be the next server architecture. In fact, I think you're going to see a lot of Optane uh, powered Xeon servers out there in 2022 and 2023, and I think they're really going to deliver for the money. But that being said, Intel has clearly sent a signal, not just a signal, a uh, definitive answer that this technology is done. What comes next? Well, after Optane, there's really not anything else that acts like persistent memory in quite the same way. But if what you were looking for was expanded memory, there's a new technology called CXL that gives a lot of the same benefits. With CXL, a system can access memory that's located in a different chassis. In other words, you can have a server that has its own memory, but then another chassis full of memory sitting next to it or sitting on a different rack. And you can have the server use that memory as basically a little bit slower system memory whenever you need it. That's really, really powerful, especially when you combine it with uh, disaggregation software that lets you dynamically move this memory from server to server as needed. So CXL gives us a lot of the benefits of Optane in terms of capacity of RAM. The problem is it doesn't really address the cost of, of RAM. And frankly, we don't really have a good answer there. RAM continues to get cheaper, but it's only getting cheaper fairly slowly. Optane promised to radically drive that slower, and frankly, CXL is going to do nothing to address that. So uh, next generation systems will have all the memory they need, but it won't be cheap, just like it isn't cheap today. The other thing that comes next is, uh, frankly, faster and faster flash. With 3D NAN, we've seen flash chips get faster and more capacity, and I think that what we're going to see is smarter systems that are more able to make use of flash memory in a way that gives us some of the performance that we came to, to like about Optane, as well as a lot of the cost effectiveness. So instead of relying on uh, persistent memory as sort of a to fill that hole in the memory and storage hierarchy, what we're going to have is CXL based memory moving down and more flash moving up. And basically that fills the hole, at least with conventional systems. As for me, I'm sad to see that this persistent memory technology didn't catch on. Uh, but at the same time, I'm glad to say that uh, Optane and Xeon scalable third generation is a pretty good solution right now. And frankly, I still feel pretty good about recommending it. Long term, nah, Optane's dead, Intel killed it, and we'll move on. If you enjoyed this episode of the Gestalt IT Checksum, please do subscribe at gestaltit.com and look for more episodes of the Checksum and Tom Hollingsworth's Tomversation series. You can also find Tom and me with the IT News of the Week every Wednesday for the Gestalt IT Rundown. Thanks for listening.